Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Hugh McCauley. I feel I should be kneeling with the mic the way it is, but um, my name is Hugh McCauley. I'm a veteran of the town. I serve on the Veterans Advisory Committee, and I'm here to speak about the um, resolution before you tonight uh, requesting a change to the Home Rule Law. And um, our Veterans Committee feels that this is extremely important. Um, all of our veterans took an oath to uphold the Constitution. And one of the core rights of that Constitution is the right to vote. In any situation where there is curtailment or uh, a vote is suppressed or not allowed to be counted, we view that as a serious attack on our constitutional rights. The um, <clears throat> veterans of the town, um, many who have belonged to the Disabled American Veterans, the American Legion, uh, Vietnam Veterans of America, the Jewish War Veterans, um, the list goes on and on. All of these groups have one thing in common, and that's the dedication to equal rights, equal values, and equal voting. We do not endorse nor oppose any of the causes that are before us tonight. We don't want to get involved in any of those issues, but what we do want to ensure is that every member of our community is heard the only thing we have in life are two things. We have our name and that we own. The second thing, the only voice we have is the voice we use at the ballot box. That's the only voice that the people on the dais hear. And so uh, on behalf of the veterans of the town, we're requesting that you approve that resolution and move it forward. In addition to the veterans, We've been approached by numerous senior citizens who want their vote heard. And the last group of people, and many of you know, are people with disabilities who have so few benefits and so few opportunities, but they have that one thing that makes them equal with everyone else, and that is the right to vote. So that home rule resolution gives us and protects that right. So I request that you send that forward and you make that message known in Albany and request a change. In a couple of months in July, for the first time in almost 50 years, the New York State Convention of American Legion will be held in our town. There will be representatives of over 450 veteran groups gathering in our town for a state convention. And we would like to go to that convention and tell them what this board has voted. And so that's our intent. And so let that freedom that we fought for, that people sacrificed for, be granted. And we ask you to grant that resolution and move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hugh. Janice Griffith. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Janice Griffith, and I'm with the NAACP, as well as the Saving Greenberg Coalition. I am here to ask that you pass the resolution to amend um, the law 2-216 that will give the right to everyone to vote on issues that impact them. Um, we have fought long and hard to have that right and to take it away or not allow us to vote on issues that will impact us negatively or positively is goes against the grain of the Constitution. So I am asking that you, and especially since it will impact so many people whose voices are not normally heard, so I'm asking that you pass the resolution to amend that law. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Colton. He was here. Michael Schwartz. Uh, good evening. My name is Michael Schwartz. I'm a 30-year resident of Greenberg, living in Edgemont. And I'd like to speak tonight about the same issue, which is a resolution by the town board to ask for an amendment to New York State Village Law 
to allow all of the 48,000 people who live in the town of Greenberg, the unincorporated town of Greenberg, to vote in any incorporation referendum. Just to clarify for people who might be watching, this is a home rule resolution, so it affects nothing but the unincorporated town. Wasn't my intent to speak tonight, but yesterday I received this flyer from a friend that was sent by the Edgemont Incorporation Committee. And the flyer reads, here they go again, town board to discuss another resolution to limit Edgemont's right to decide whether to incorporate. And I was quite upset by it because it dismisses the hard work and stature of members of our community and leaders of our community who are working hard to ensure the rights of their neighbors. This whole kind of movement began only several weeks ago and I was invited to, in, to join when a number of people began to look more closely at what incorporation might bring and the financial havoc that it would wreak on the people not uh, in Edgemont living in the town, in the unincorporated town of Greenberg. And then they went further and determined that not only were they not considered in terms of the incorporation, they weren't allowed to vote on something which affected them and their families in the most extraordinary manners. So what occurred was is a small group of people got together and it wasn't the town. It was a small group of leaders got together and it increased and increased and increased. And now there are 20 of them in only two or three weeks representing thousands of people in Greenberg who want the vote, who decided it's, it's incorrect for their vote and immoral for their vote to be suppressed. These 15 or 20 leaders, all who have done so much for the town over the years and the people they represent, shouldn't be dismissed. Their work shouldn't be called, quote, another trick by the town to stop the petition. Because in fact, this process was directed at the town board and our three state delegates. That's where we are. We need the town board to pass this resolution today so we can begin to explain to our three uh, state delegates, Senator Stuart Cousins and Assembly women uh, Shimsky and Paulin, that now is the time to change a law and give everybody equal rights under that law. Everybody deserves the right to vote. As a 75-year-old guy brought up in the Bronx who was a community organizer in the 60s, I can tell you one thing. People left to their own choices will do what's best for them. Every change from the civil rights laws in the 60s to women's rights, to rights for LGBTQ people, wasn't done because people wanted it. It was done because legislation was passed by people who cared and represented properly their constituency. And that's what we need from you tonight. We need you to pass this, and we need to use all of your power and all of your connections with our state legislators to make sure that this amendment occurs. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bishop Preston. My name is Bishop Preston. I am the pastor of Christ Temple Great International Pentecostal Holiness Church and a uh, member of the town of Greenberg. I uh, come before you tonight uh, to our uh, supervisor finder to the honorable council persons that sit at the dais to address the resolution that uh, is before us tonight for a vote to push forward. Um, November 19, 1863, Abraham Lincoln stood in Gettysburg 
and said four score and seven years ago our fathers brought forth to this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. If this resolution is not pushed forward and the changes made to incorporate or allow every person in the unincorporated town of Greenberg vote on a decision that affects them, then our equality is fouled at best. I rise tonight to urge the town board to highly consider the changes necessary to, uh, to give the opportunity to every person that's going to be affected the opportunity to vote in such resolution or such decision. We are not rising in opposition to anyone that would like to incorporate, but we would like to have a vote in anything that affect us. And it's hard for me to conceive that taking 25% of our gross revenue away from the town would not affect those that are left behind. It's amazing to me that we still operate in today's world on laws that were written over 100 years ago and still feel that they are to be implied and implicated in our today's society. It's time for change. We need you to help us voice the need for that change. Because if we don't stand together, as somebody famous said, then we all die together as fools. We need to be together. We need to have the right to vote. And this law, as it's written, reeks with racism, separatism, and discrimination at best. Because it was written at a time when black people especially could not even own property. So we need to consider these facts and understand that whatever we do as the town of Greenberg, town that I moved to 27 years ago, became ingrained in the town, fell in love with the town, and I have been an advocate for the people of the town since that time, and I want to stay at the town, but things like this does not help me in, to influence me to stay here unless we can make these kind of changes. And I urge the board to, to, to consider the fact that whatever we do, we must do it together because we are stronger together because together we stand and divide it, we fall. Good evening, I'm town supervisor, town council members, town clerk. Um, my name is Alicia Ford. I live in Parkway Homes. I'm currently the president of the Parkway Homes Civic Association. And I'm here with my fellow committee here regarding the home rule res resolution for Lord 2.2-216 amendment. I'm here asking that the board approves this resolution, the home resolution. We have too much to lose if Edgemont separates from the town of Greenberg. This is the third time they've come with this fight and they send all these hate mail letters out. I've been a resident for 35 years here and I've been very happy here with the town, with the services. And I know if they were to, if this law is not passed and they get their wish, we will lose many of our services. People will move out, the homes will be vacant, the stores will leave. We're trying to build back up Greenberg, not tear it down. So I'm here asking for you to approve the home resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blair Connolly. Good evening. Council members and Ms. Bevel, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be heard. Um, I do not have anything to say about George Santos. Let me lead off with that. I wasn't expecting that one, but we heard it. I wanted to rise in opposition to the Home Rule request, 
And this has happened several times in the last few years. This is not the first such instance. Uh, and I wanted to also take the time to correct what I think are some misconceptions about the village law and how it operates. Uh, it was noted before it's been around over 100 years. That's true. It was significantly amended also in 1964. And it is part of a system of checks and balances that protect the interests of citizens of a town. Now, we talk about towns. There are 933 of them in the state of New York. Last, last I checked, 933. It's a lot of towns. Many of them are centuries old. Those borders that were drawn centuries ago are arbitrary today in many instances. Greenberg was, I believe, 1788, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you, Ms. Bevel. I, if you say it, I trust you. <laughs> so uh, one of the reasons for the village law, maybe the central reason for the village law, is to protect the interests of people in a smaller part of the town who do not have the electoral power to protect themselves in the, pro in the political process. It gives them the right, it gives those citizens the right, if they feel they are not being represented in the larger community because they're a smaller part of the town and they don't have the votes, it gives them the right to incorporate as, as a village still within the town of, of, uh, of, of which they're a part. But it gives them a greater degree of auto autonomy over their own affairs while still remaining part of the town. That is its central purpose. This is nothing new. There are over 500 villages in the state of New York, six right here in Greenberg, of course, as we know. And it has not been the case ever that that decision of whether to incorporate themselves has been subject to the will of the remainder of the town because that would defeat the whole purpose. The entire purpose is because if they feel they are not being heard in the broader community because they're too small, because they don't have enough votes to be listened to, they get to decide for themselves. That's an important check and balance. Among other things, it creates an incentive for you people to make sure that you listen to them because otherwise they can take care of themselves. It was said a couple times that people don't want to have their votes taken away. Nobody's vote has been taken away. It has never been up to the people outside the community that wants to incorporate to decide whether those people get to incorporate. It has always been up to those people and for a good reason because that's the point they have that remedy. We have that remedy. That's the law, and it makes sense. It makes no sense to, to change that law in a way that defeats its very purpose. Greenberg is actually a perfect example of why we have this law. It's one of 933 towns. It's the 12th largest by population, Greenberg. It's one of the perfect examples of why we have the village law. Edgemont is about 8% of that. We don't have the power to vote you people out of office. We never did, we never will. That's why we have the village law to protect us. That's our fundamental protection. And to do this, by the way, as a home rule request, meaning that the people in Greenberg and only in Greenberg will be effectively second class citizens whose rights are subject to the whims of other people from whom the village law is supposed to protect them is particularly outrageous in my view. I would say one other thing. We're going to have a vote at some point. We will. And then the people of Edgemont are going to have to make a decision for themselves of whether they want to incorporate. You guys have done more to convince them that they should than any of us ever possibly could. The constant efforts to take our rights away, the constant efforts to make it harder for us to exercise that franchise, I can't tell you how many people I've heard from who saying it is those actions more than anything else that make them want to do this. Okay, I'm a lawyer. People who have a good case are not afraid of a trial. People who have a good argument are not afraid of a vote. But all you're doing is telling us, no, no, we don't want you to decide for yourselves. You're essentially admitting that you don't have a good argument why we wouldn't incorporate. That's the message you're sending. I'll leave you with that. Thank you for the opportunity to be heard. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> Johan Snags. Good evening, Supervisor Finer, um, town board members, and uh, clerk uh, Judith Bevel. 
I have so much going through my head. I, I had planned on saying some very specific things, but the gentleman there kind of threw me off. He said something to the effect of, um, of good reasoning or something to that effect, are not afraid of the vote. That being the case, let all of unincorporated Greenberg vote on how um, they're going to be affected by uh, by keeping the rule uh, 2 216. It makes sense. 25% of the town's rep tax revenue is going to be, is going to disappear. Freder Frederick Douglass said in 1865 that slavery is not abolished until a black man has the ballot. About 100 years later, the 15th Amendment, the Voting Rights Act, was signed into law 100 years later. It just, it just it reeks of privilege to me that a, an attorney will stand here understanding the law. And I have in front of me uh, a communication here from the EIC that says something to the effect of the resolution violates several laws but the town nevertheless tries this trick each time we have a petition. You know, the people that participate in this group, whoever they represent should be ashamed of themselves because they use um, deceit and subterfuge to confuse people into voting against the rights of people that are historically disenfranchised. And it's impossible to review every single law in the books to make a determination of where there's a lack of equity. But when one comes to the forefront under a circumstance like this, it's a perfect opportunity to review it so that there could be a real determination for the people who have been historically disenfranchised to be able to have um, equal rights, right? So. The town of Greenberg, up until the 60s, I believe, Edgemont in particular, still had restricted covenants um, on the deeds of homeowners, which is r ridiculous. He mentioned the amendment in, 19, in, in 1965. Ironically, it was the middle, it was about the same time that the uh, voters' right um, the Voters' Rights uh, Act was implemented. I find that coincidental or ironic because it was the, the very environment that people of color had to fight for civil rights. It's, it's, it's still not equal rights, it's just to be treated civilly, to make it legal, right? Um, we're in a position right now where uh, the pro there's a large majority of people of color that, that exists in the town of Greenberg, um, Fairview, unincorporated in Greenberg in general, that would be um, adversely affected if Edgemont is able to incorporate. It just makes sense. It's, it's equity. It's... Um, it's, it's moral that we seriously consider how we write laws, the laws that we allow to continue to perpetuate the environments that we live in, and, and really focus on the fact that we need to be inclusive at, at this stage of the game. We've had enough time with um, marginalization and discrimination. This is a real opportunity to change things so that you, there's an opportunity for equity in the town. And for this very small, very wealthy group to try to pull themselves away without a real comprehensive plan that's sustainable and sabotages the well-being of the, the majority of the town is ridiculous. So please um, vote for uh, approval of this law. Thank you. Resolution. Dr. Carol Allen.
Good evening. My name is Carol Allen. I'm from Hartsdale. My colleagues here have all spoken very eloquently, so I will be brief. Tonight, the town board is considering a resolution to ask the state government to give to the people of Greenberg a basic constitutional right, the right to vote in matters that will affect us, namely the matter of incorporation of a new village within Greenberg. Our right to vote is denied by a state law that is over 100 years old and which is desperately in need of updating to ensure that all New Yorkers are able to participate in our democratic process. I applaud your efforts to address this injustice, and I ask that you approve the resolution so that we can move it forward to our state legislators for action. Thank you. TB1, resolution of the town board of the town of Greenberg, requesting that the New York State Legislature execute a town home rule request authorizing the town of Greenberg County of Westchester to amend section 2216 of the New York Village Law to extend the qualifications of voters to residents within the territory of unincorporated Greenberg in the event of the filing of a petition for incorporation within the town of Greenberg. I'd like to move that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, 